Welcome to this brief tutorial brought to you by Satara University. This video is not intended as a substitute for training and it is only to provide an overview to getting started with Phoenix Win Unlin. It will give you a brief run through of the Phoenix Win Unlin interface and demonstrate some common tasks using data from a simple crossover study of 12 subjects. After importing a data file, we will create graphs of concentration versus time, then perform non compartmental analysis and summarize the output in a simple table. Lastly, I will show you how to assemble these into a captioned document using Reporter. When first opened, the Phoenix workspace is empty. To get started, one can either load an existing project or create a new project. To create a new project, select File, New Project. It is recommended to always rename a project. Then, to import the study data, select File, Import. Let's import a CSV file, NCA Crossover. This file is available for download within this tutorial. Within this Import Wizard dialog, we can tell Phoenix how the file is structured. Note the worksheet appears to have a units row. Selecting the Has Units Row option sets these as the column attributes. Then we can click Finish to complete the wizard as there is only a single datasheet. In the object browser, one can right click on any worksheet to see the actions that can be taken. Selecting the Send To option displays all the analysis objects that can be performed upon that dataset in Phoenix. For example, to generate a plot, let's choose Plotting and then the XY plot item. This results in an XY plot object being placed in the workflow, as well as linking the input dataset. Mapping subject as group makes it the profile identifier in the plot. Selecting formulation as column lattice condition will create additional plots by formulation on the same page. You can scroll down to see more columns. Select time as the required variable x and conch as y. Then, to create the plot, click on the green arrow to execute this object. The plot is generated and displayed in the Results tab. To better visualize this plot, one can select Layout and, for example, alter the dimensions of the plot. And then click Fit Image to Screen. The two formulations are presented side by side because formulation was selected as a column lattice. The plot can be formatted in different ways, like changing the y-axis to log. Note that the upper panel can be made larger by simply dragging the border down. The variables being plotted can be changed by returning to the Setup tab and changing the mappings. If we want a single plot for each subject with both formulations, subject can be remapped to page, i.e. sort, and switch formulation to group. Clicking the green arrow will re-execute with the new mappings, giving 12 pages, one for each subject. To rename the plot object, double click or use the F2 key. To perform more analyses on this dataset, one can return to the data folder and select the original worksheet. Then, right click and send to non compartmental analysis before choosing NCA. Again, we see the object is immediately added to the workflow and the source data is linked. Various options can be set to match your analysis plan. For instance, Linlog trapezoids for AUC. Since this is a crossover study, we must map both subject and formulation as sort variables to identify each profile. Generally, Phoenix indicates mandatory inputs in orange. Note that time is already mapped because the names match. And we can map conch to concentration. If other columns would be useful in the output, they can be selected as carry. Note also that you can drag down on selections. A preview of any source worksheet can be toggled on. Now, to set up the dosing, since it was not in the imported data, we can enter it manually by selecting Use Internal Worksheet. Deselecting some or all of the dosing sorts 
gives a simpler worksheet with which to work. Because this study was single dose, we will enter a time of zero. And let's say the dose amount was 15. Note that multiple columns can be selected and copied down. To enter dose units, scroll down to the bottom of the options panel and enter the dose unit as milligrams. In the slope selector, each profile's apparent elimination phase can be selected to calculate the terminal half-life. Each profile can be reviewed. The other optional inputs and settings on the left are described in more detail in the user guides. Or one can simply click Execute to let Phoenix's best fit algorithm choose the probable points. The output plots clearly show the slope and half-life calculated. Selection of the slopes by user or the system is recorded in the worksheet slope settings. Let's move on to the final parameters calculated. To summarize the key parameters, one can right click on the results worksheet and send it to a table. Several table presentations can be created. I will map subject to row ID and formulation as row stratification. I'll select some parameters to be presented, like Half-Life, Cmax, and a few other common parameters to form the body of the table. Now select the Statistics tab in the lower panel and choose your desired statistics. Once more, click the green triangle to generate this table. Further formatting can be set under Options. For example, selecting column titles allows you to change text fragments or format. This will update column titles containing the word max, so that max is subscripted upon execution. With the 8.3 release, you can now double click if you need to edit these, clicking update to commit any changes. With our brief analysis now complete, let me show you how easy it is to create the report within Phoenix. Insert a reporter object anywhere within the workflow. All source data and workflow outputs within the project can be selected. I will just choose the plots, the final parameter table, and the core output from NCA. As each one is checked, it gets added to the list below where you can click Settings to further format the output. Captions can contain tags from the data to update automatically. They can simply be dragged over and other text added around them. Let us move to the Figure tab. On the left are options to reset the Y scale dynamically, whereas on the right, you can arrange the plots to fit the page better. This is reflected in the preview of the selected object, where we now see two columns of plots. Moving on to the table, I can drag that up to be the first object in the report. With 8.3, the date timestamps now reflect the time the object was last executed, whereas previously they were the time of report generation. Under Report Setup, other general options like a word template, paper size and margins, as well as the table of contents can be controlled. This report object is executed like any other in Phoenix, and the result is a Word document. In this case, you can see the first table is being split, because it is too wide for the page. We can fix this by returning to setup and inserting a section break and dragging the break before the table. Then I can set the page orientation to landscape before inserting a second page break to set the rest of the document back to portrait.
Now I will export the report to open it in Word. We see that the table is now on a landscape page and fits nicely. Zooming in, we can see the NCA core output, the formatted table with its timestamp, and the caption plots arranged in a lattice. I hope you found this free video useful. Please feel free to watch it again while replicating the steps in Phoenix yourself. You can find further examples through contents in the online help. For more structured learning and certification, you can continue your training through Sitara University's courses that cover both scientific and software-specific topics. Thank you.